It felt strange in reverse, being followed. Since the cover of Casper Davies was now at least relatively permanently his true identity, he allowed himself the luxury of immersing himself in this cover's persona. Cass was a private detective, and this title was not nearly as glamorous as you'd think. While one pictured Humphrey Bogart tracking his criminal prey, it was far more often spying of cheating spouses and finding out who was taking a shit in their pet's litter box. Side note, it was almost always the roommate's ex. Anyways, he had caught view of the younger woman shadowing him a few streets back. He went through the usual motions of trying to lose them by turning street after street, but she kept on him. She seemed vaguely familiar, but he hadn't managed to take in her face. But there was something about her. Regardless, Cass had shit to do and he didn't have time for cat and mouse. Popping down an alley, he took Kurt's steps, stepping behind a dumpster for a moment. He shrugged his raincoat off his person. And that suddenly became her person, as with a twitch and shift in infrastructure, he became Cassandra Evans, widow and private investigator. Well, what could he say he had a type? Feigning drunkenness, Casper, now Cassandra, stumbled out from behind the dumpster, seemingly bungling into his stalker. The woman fell back a bit at the impact. Get out of my way, whore! The mystery woman following Casper felt she had no time for stupid bitches slowing down her pursuit, and she shoved her to the side, hastening out the other end of the alley. Cassandra smiled, now having gotten a good look at the woman. She was touched by the god machine, and had at one point been on the entity's hit list. Noting this, Cassandra, a much more gifted tracker than the amateur that had been on her tail, began taking slow steps on the path after her stalker. Cassandra had questions. Hey everyone and welcome back to the Botch Pit, I'm Chris, Librarian of the Pit, and I'm here with some content for Demon the Descent. Demon the Descent is really an underappreciated game in the Chronicles of Darkness line, and I'm happy to finally be finding some time to get into it. Up front, here's the deal. Demon is a meaty, meaty game, and at times the book is not the most clearly laid out. That's part of the reason this game is a bit harder to fully digest than some of the others. That said, as we go along in our journey of learning and mapping out the game lines, some of it may come out in different practical order than the way we may like. To compensate for this, as we go along guide by guide, we'll adjust the order in the playlist for the line to make them make the most sense. For example, while today I'm covering cover, and the basic premise of what's called going loud, when the time is right and I get the demonic forms down, I'll move it to the playlist to make sure the demonic form comes first. As I'm a slave to my ADHD and OCD both, I need to address topics that interest me first. With that out of the way, let's get to it. Firstly, we need to discuss what basic cover is. When a servant angel of the god machine has a purpose that involves mortal interaction, they need to take on some manner of guise to fit in with the world and get shit done. This is called a cover, and upon creation to anyone in the wiser, it will seem as if that quote-unquote person has always been around. They will seem as if they've always had that one girlfriend, and the mortal girlfriend will assume she's always been with the guys. Same with paperwork, card registrations, credit cards, etc. The god machine has quite the reach. So normally when angels complete their missions, they retreat back to wherever they go to be recycled, disassembled, perhaps put to stasis if they're useful enough. That cover will not vanish, perhaps but perhaps be considered complete and abandoned. Maybe that guy's, the cover, will get into a car accident, perhaps a skydiving accident, or they move somewhere super remote where people just can't reach them, but the end result is always the same. Closure, with no loose ends. The guy's was simply a temporary means to an end. But to a demon, cover is much, much more vital. When a demon experiences their disconnect from the god machine and comes hurtling back to our plane of existence, their last utilized cover is the identity they assume. Not out of choice, but simply by default, as that's how they last existed here. From there, they need to haul ass and place as much distance between them and their pursuing angels as possible. Assuming they manage to survive that part of the demonic condition, now comes the hard part. Maintaining that cover, shoring it up, and potentially even establishing more covers. While up front the initial cover is basic and strong enough, assuming we're not using merits or what have you, it's just not enough to work long term without maintenance and planning of some kind. The god machine has eyes everywhere, and eventually something will draw its attention to the demon. And while that cover mentioned is okay, it will not hold up under intense scrutiny over time. However, the more legit the cover is, the longer it will hold up. Should the demon fully commit to living the life of that cover, the god machine is far less likely to waste its time trying to pick it apart. The entity will just assume it's another human and move on. Many things wear down cover, utilizing embeds, exploits, partial transformations. These are all things that take a toll on the cover. On top of the risk of people seeing the demon performing these feats, the simple act of drawing upon the dark energies of the god machine is enough to draw its attention over time. Also, not spending enough time living the life of the cover will take its toll. So what is a demon to do? Like I said before, spending time living the life of the cover is enough to keep it going. You know, the more friends they have that they can name, the more cars that have been registered for longer, all that stuff, it adds depth to the cover. And 
you know, the god machine's like, yeah, it seems legit, and they just kind of move along. Fortunately, though, demons also have other options. The next one is setting yourself up with multiple covers. Being able to bounce between cover to cover is always nice. Variety is the spice of life, after all. Many demons stick to a type. Brunettes, farmers, athletes. Many feel more secure sticking to what they know. It's easier to act out a life when you barely have to act. How does one go about getting these new covers, though? I did say, you're stuffed into the last one that you lived. So it's time for Let's Make a Deal with Demons. The demon, utilizing its knowledge of the infrastructure, makes a deal with a mortal in need and manipulates the infrastructure of reality into gifting the mortal with something or things that they want or need. They make a timed arrangement, often with the demon being somewhat vague on the details, and when the time is up, they show up to take their due. And what is their due? That person's entire place in existence. So let's get a couple things clear here. There are many misconceptions regarding what happens to the mortal. Is this a deal for their soul? Yes and no. The demon does next to nothing with the soul itself. Instead, it consumes the poor other party's body and soul. Now having that spark within them, and with a void left in reality by the person that was just there a moment ago, the demon steps into that vacancy, taking the place of that mortal as an entirely new cover. There are catches to this though. Taking the place using this method does not gift you with the memories or demeanor of that person. While language is no problem, as every demon can speak every tongue, just about everything else is. Mannerisms, hobbies, friends and relationships, even careers. The demon is gifted with no knowledge about any of that. The wise demon has done their research first, studying their prey before making their move. If they fail to plan it out appropriately, the cover will fray quickly, leaving the entire endeavor moot and also leaving them vulnerable to scrutiny under the god machine's near omnipotent eye. They could try to wing it, but that's not a good call at all. The next method is significantly more difficult. Instead of the demon taking the existence of someone else, they piece together, or patchwork, a cover for themselves. The way they do this is by bargaining for aspects of multiple people's lives. This one's ability to fix cars, another person's relationship with their girlfriend, another's love for teacup collection. They build up all these little pieces of people's souls until they have enough dots in their cover to create a custom cover from scratch using those pieces. While difficult and extremely dangerous if you don't have the dots or pieces, nothing fits quite like a custom tailored suit. There are hazards to this though. While you step directly to a cover that a demon assumed and there was a hole that needed to be filled, the patchwork is different in that it breathes life into someone that has never existed before, and the infrastructure around it needs to shift to seem like that cover has always been there. Needless to say, this draws attention the demon does not desire, but hey, they knew the risks. They wanted that cover, now they get it, with all due headaches coming with it. The last method I'll be talking about is the coolest one, if not the most dangerous and foolhardy act a demon could try to accomplish. Demons still have an innate understanding and ability to follow omens, signs and all things touched by the god machine, just the signs of shit going south. Using these skills, our demon starts plotting and tracking down when an angel will be sent down to our plane by the god machine. Here's why this matters. There's a brief, ever brief amount of time that the guise of an angel is vacant before it takes its place within it. It just so happens that a demon can make an attempt to get into this new cover before the angel does, claiming this new car smell shell for itself. Obviously this is risky on many levels. The god machine plans almost everything out so far in advance that there should be no room for ever. Perhaps it has cultists awaiting the arrival of the angel and plans to have them assist the new deity. Maybe there are other angels awaiting the arrival themselves, planning to escort their new brethren along their goal. In any case, it's safe to say that even getting close to this new and potentially well-guarded and empty cover is a challenge, with survival not being even close to guaranteed. A wise demon brings apt help and a plan, as other demons can bolster our protagonist. Then again, in Demon the Descent, betrayal is ever a threat to the demons, especially from their closest allies. Alright, cool. So, we've discussed covers, their perils, methods of getting more. So what happens when your cover is blown, or you're facing insurmountable odds that you and your cover are not going to survive? Remember, if you die in your cover, it's all she wrote. You get loud, of course. What is going loud? It's the panic button. Incarnating in your natural demonic form and for a moment getting access to a power set long forgotten since you are still one with the god machine. No, you are not restored to the totality of your strength, but you are still quite the imposing force indeed, capable of going neck to neck with an angel, for a moment at least. Anyone who sees you sees a terror being of metal and damnation. Panic and fear sets in along with a healthy dose of madness as people flee before you. To be clear, however, this needs to be said. 
every single time you go loud, that cover you are hidden within is shredded absolutely, with no chance of repair whatsoever. You are stuck in that demonic form until you take on one of your other covers or you form a new one by whatever means available. Also key to remember is that when you have gone loud is that your frequency screams out to the god machine and all its servants. You are on borrowed time with no means of hiding without a cover, and there is no way around it unless you have some manner of merit that allows you to hide in some pocket of reality away from the view and touch of the god machine and its servants. The second you pop back out however, the game is still afoot once more. It's like GTA with 5 stars, just because you hid for a moment doesn't mean the coast is ever clear. Mind you, partial transformations, which we'll get into later, fray but don't necessarily destroy the cover. And there we have it, another guide under our belts and more questions raised and answered. We'd have it no other way as it keeps us hard at work with our never ending work. We're going to continue picking away at Demon the Descent and I'm glad we had you along for the ride. This is Chris, Librarian of the Botch Pit, checking out until next time. Thanks for listening and we'll catch you next time. Bye.